Thank you, Daniel and Sebastian. Now we have Victoria Broadbridge and Gian Domenico Di Domenico. Victoria is a senior teaching fellow at the University of Portsmouth. Her research interests focus on the anthropology of tech and its impact on marketing practices with expertise in ASMR and neurodivergence. Gian Domenico is assistant professor in marketing at Cardiff University. His primary research interest examines disentangling the dark side of digital environments, specifically the dynamics of misinformation spreading and its impact on consumers and brands. Their co-author Federico Manjo will be joining us for the Q&A. ASMR is a fascinating device that, con that content creators use to engage and build emotional connections with their audience. Victoria and Gian Domenico, tell us about what you found and how ASMR influencers can make great partners for brands. Thank you so much for introducing us, Nanette. Um, so jumping straight into the presentation then, what we're gonna be covering today is um, what ASMR is, also looking at the categories of ASMR content that we use within our research. We're also going to look at what we wanted to find out and how we did this through our method. And then finally, we're going to present some practical suggestions for branding managers when considering ASMR for their marketing efforts. So firstly, what is ASMR? So ASMR stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. And essentially, this is a physiological response which results in individuals feeling a pleasurable tingling in their scalp and also down their spine. But it can also result in pleasurable shivers or goosebumps, and also it has been known to induce feelings of extreme relaxation and also sleepiness. Sorry, I just went a bit too far there. ASMR responses are elicited what we know in the community to be called tingle triggers. And tingle triggers can kind of span across three different key areas. The first one is auditory triggers, which looks at things like whispering, tapping of different objects such as pens, and also potentially positivity. So where people compliment you, for example. We can also look at visual triggers. So for example, seeing the movement of smoke, the satisfying cutting of soap bars, and also seeing people touch things that are soft. The final trigger is looking at haptic triggers, and haptic triggers relate more to the touch elements. And this can include things like stroking, hair play, and also potentially the touch that's given to you by a medical professional in a physical assessment. So you're probably wondering if ASMR is this big thing, then why haven't you experienced it? And the truth is that not everyone experiences ASMR. Within our research team, for example, only one of us actually experiences a typical ASMR response. Um, and it's not really clear at this point how many people experience ASMR versus those that don't experience ASMR. The thing that's really great about the ASMR community is that it's it's made up of a variety of different people who watch ASMR content for different reasons. So they might watch it for that physiological response, but some people also watch it for that extreme relaxation and sleepiness. But there is one thing common within this community is that they are all seeking to recreate a positive experience together. ASMR's popularity over the last decade has exponentially grown, and we're seeing large household brands like Apple, Ikea, and KFC all engaging with ASMR content. It's estimated that there's around 500 ASMR videos um, posted each day, and this is probably going to be growing significantly with the likes of TikTok. And ASMR artists, who are the people who create ASMR content, are earning up to six figures by doing this for a living. The interest in ASMR is shown by the fact that in 2022, it was one of the top most five search terms online. So we can broadly define ASMR content into three key areas. The first one is branded ASMR content, and I'm going to show you an example of that in the next slide. This is where a brand generates and creates its own ASMR content with ASMR triggers. The second example is sponsored ASMR content that utilizes ASM artists through paid collaborations, um, such as you know, including the products in their videos. 
And then the final and most dominant type of ASMR content is non-sponsored ASMR content, which is created by ASMR artists to elicit a um, physiological response from its audience, but none of that content is paid for or supported by brands. So I'm going to show you this example of the, the Michelob Ultra um, advert that was aired during the 2019 Super Bowl that features Zoe Kravitz. Let's all experience something together. Here. So pure, you can taste it. Michelob Ultra Pure Gold. Beer in its organic form. I'm trying to move the slides, David, but it doesn't. Okay, thank you. Um, so in terms of um, what we know over the last decade about ASMR, in 2010, ASMR was originally coined by Jennifer Allen as um, her trying to describe her experiences online. We then saw the first instance of it being covered in the media by Julia Beck. And it was in 2015 that we actually saw the first academic study published within the realms of psychology. We then saw that shortly followed in 2017 in the area of neuroscience. So within a very short period of time, we've seen the identif identification and legitimization of ASMR as a concept. In terms of um, marketing, however, in the last four years, we've seen around 10 academic journal articles published within this area from the perceptions of ASMR ads all the way of ASMR as a way of in, in encouraging impulsive behavior. However, what we don't know, however, is how ASMR impacts things like digital related outcomes, such as digital engagement. We're also not clear about how the content source, so for example, whether content is branded or non-branded, and whether it's a larger ASM artist or a smaller ASM artist has an impact on how people react to the ASMR content. So that is what essentially led us to our research questions, which is going to be covered now by Jean Domenico. Thanks, Toya. Um, yeah, as, as Toya said, uh, there is much uh, we don't know about ASMR. Uh, and so we wanted to, uh, to create um, practical paper giving advice to brand managers and advertisers on how to more effectively navigate the ASMR context. Um, and so we tried to uh, give an answer to these three research questions. First of all, we wanted to compare the viewing patterns uh, and therefore the visibility of uh, ASMR contents uh, across the three different types of uh, uh, ASMR videos, such as branded, not sponsored and sponsored videos. Um, then uh, past researchers uh, try as treated um, ASMR as a homogeneous uh, phenomenon. Ra we rather know that it uh, has many facets that need uh, further attention that can create different consequences in terms of uh, uh, in uh, consumers. So we wanted to identify the main types of ASMR contents, the main genres, um, and then focusing on the role of influencers. Uh, we uh, delve deeper into uh, how influencers shape both low and high uh, engagement with uh, ASMR contents. Um, we built a database comprising more than 7,000 uh, unique ASMR videos. Uh, we started from 15 seed videos, five for each category of ASMR content, and then Using the YouTube recommendation uh, algorithm, we built this database uh, 
for um, containing these videos. Um, and we scraped uh, the associated metadata in terms of uh, views, likes, and comments. Um, so um, we adopted, uh, uh, we analyzed this database in uh, three steps. Uh, the first step was to do a, a YouTube network analysis to see the different viewing patterns of uh, the uh, branded and influencer-based ASMR contents, uh, and also to identify the main ASMR genres. Um, then the last two steps revolved around the role of influencers in determining uh, um, engagement with the, with the contents. Uh, so we analyzed both uh, low involvement engagement in terms of views and, uh, and likes, and we performed an automated text analysis on the comments uh, to um, understand uh, the content of, of comments. Uh, what we found is that um, the viewing patterns differ a lot uh, between the three uh, types of ASMR contents with influencer-based contents being more homogeneous, meaning that uh, if a social media user starts watching a video, uh, an influencer ASMR video, uh, they will likely stay in this context uh, because the algorithms su will suggest similar videos. This is not going to happen for branded contents uh, as their networks seem more heterogeneous as scattered. And this suggests uh, um, probably that the um, um, the contents, the branded contents in the ASMR conte uh, context are, uh, is not well developed. Um, and then we identified different genres. We identified nine of them, and we think it's important because different these genres are characterized by different uh, audio triggers uh, that uh, advertiser uh, could uh, could use in their uh, marketing efforts. Uh, and coming on the role of influencers, we found that. Uh, mega ASM artists, so uh, influencers with huge followings, are able to elicit more uh, low involvement responses in terms of views and uh, and likes, and this might be explained by the uh, size of their follower base. But when it comes to comments, uh, we identified some clear patterns in terms of the difference between uh, more prominent and less prominent here. Um, uh, ASM artists, influencers. Um, we found that micro ASM artists are able to uh, elicit more effective responses, while mega ASM artists are able to generate more brand related discussion. Um, wrapping up, uh, we wanted to give advertisers uh, hands on information and tips on how to navigate the uh, ASMR uh, uh, landscape. Uh, we found that brands, uh, branded content might suffer from reduced visibility uh, and might be, might be perceived also as inauthentic by the ASMR community. So probably the best way to enter the ASMR context is through partnering with influencers. But how to choose that? It depends really on the objective of the uh, of the uh, of the campaign, uh, it is true that mega ASM artists can elicit more brand recall, but they are costly. Uh, and if brands or advertisers want to elicit more emotional responses, they can make the most of uh, uh, with partnering with smaller scaled uh, ASM artists. Uh, and thank you for your attention.